update 1.20.1 has hit the common test server. And in my opinion, this update has got one of the best potentials to be the greatest update in recent years. Some of the most exciting things in this update for me personally are the random events and dynamic cover. I'm very, very keen to see how people are gonna be able to use these different gameplay opportunities especially on maps that people are already well accustomed to in their traditional meta over the several years that this game has been around for. And I'm very curious to see what kind of memes people are going to come up with when it comes to them. Japanese tank destroyers as well, I'm very, very keen to see how when they get added, because for myself personally, I've actually been asking for Japanese tank destroyers for quite a while now. And how many years has it been since we last had our Japanese tank added to the game overall? So I'm very, very excited to be having these features in. Unfortunately though, there's always some bad with the good, and the bad in this patch so far is going to be what bus and the rework through perk system. I think it's only fair today to discuss some of those elements and talk about what I think can be improved about them going forward before 1.20.1 does hit the live server, so let's just jump right into it. One of the most controversial parts of this update is going to be the rework crew system. Now, I like the concept they're going for. They've introduced some new skills to try and diversify player builds, try simplifying some things down in the way the perks work. So for example, as soon as you start training the perk, it will work. However, it's in fact will improve as you're training through, which is quite a nice thing in my opinion. It does make things a lot better. However, the way they've actually implemented all this is kind of poor. So we have got for each defined crew role, so your commander, driver, gunner, loader, radio operator, they've each got six specific perks, and then there's overall group perks, which there are three of, brothers in arms, concealment, and repairs. Now, this all works well for vehicles that have large sets of crews. For example, let's take our mouse. There's typically one role assigned for each member. So your commander is just a commander, your gunner is just a gunner, driver is just a driver, etc., etc. as you go through. However, the issue comes about when we are talking about crews that only have, say, two to three crew members in them. Let's take the most extreme example, and we're going to talk about the Manticore. Now, the Manticore's only got two members. He's got a commander, functions as a commander, gunner, loader, and radio operator all rolled into one, and the driver, which functions as a driver. Now, the issue is, you don't have just six perks to train not just 12, not 18, not even 24, but if you want to get a fully maxed out Manticore captain, uh, commander, sorry, you need to have 27 different perks trained to him in its entirety. Now that's a lot, but what makes it even worse, and I'll link a clip to this that Daki has shown to be such a fantastic example of where he was trying to do this, is in between each perk as you train them up, the requirements increase exponentially. So what that means is the requirements between each perk are not the same as the previous one. So let's just do some basic math here. Say perks, uh, say you're getting your first perk. So you've got zero perks and one perk. Let's say it costs 10,000 experience, right? 10,000 experience between those two. Perks one to two, they'll cost, for example, 20,000. Then perks three to four will cost 40,000. So you're doubling the requirement each time. And if you do that over 27 different iterations, you can just see how crazy the amount of experience you need to get is. And frankly, that is completely unfeasible for anybody that wants to be able to do something like that. And it's going to hurt quite a fair few vehicles in the game, because there's a lot of tanks that say, for example, have the gunner sharing with the radio operator, or the loader sharing with the radio operator, and there's some skills there that you're going to quite potentially want. For example, firefighting's been removed from the group perks, and it's now gone ahead and put as a radio operator skill. So if you want to be going ahead and retraining some of your crew for that, you got to be very, very careful about what you want to do. Speaking about retraining, Wargaming has gone ahead and they're giving you a very, very generous amount of only 12 different retraining orders. Right. 12 retraining orders. That's abysmal. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. That is frankly not enough to giving out to people because there's plenty of people like myself included who've got hundreds of vehicles in their garage and 12 is just not going to cut it 12 retraining orders does not cut the requirements for what we need in my opinion what should wargaming be doing especially if when this update comes out the two main things i would love to see with this crew rework is completely abolish this exponential requirement in, or at least significantly reduce it in between each crew skill. So for example, you have a flat, I know, 10,000 experience between each skill. 
or it's significantly reduced. So instead of, say, doubling between each of them, only like a plus 10% increase between the skills. So there is still a bit of an increase to trying to grind towards all the skills, but it's not as brutalizingly difficult as it is currently now. And the other thing I would love to see is the first two weeks after the update, I would love it if Wargaming gave free crew resets for every single vehicle in the game for two weeks. All players, everyone gets to keep resetting their crews for free. Why is that important? Especially with a major crew rework like this, people want to be testing and experimenting with different versions of their commanders, gunners, loaders, etc. They want to try different builds. Now, you can't be punishing people for wanting to experiment around with trying to work out what the best what the most fun versions of all these builds are so you need to have this grace period out for people either you do something like that which is my preferred one or you give everyone i know 200 or so retraining orders something like that or at least they can work towards some something along those lines which is at least what i would expect because there's going to be a lot of testing that needs to be done and it's just not something that's able to be done enough in the common test in my opinion because there is simply a not enough time and you want the entire general population to be able to test it because not everyone's going to be playing the common test so being able to test this out on the live server in normal gameplay is going to be the best part where they can where people can work out what's going to be best for them what works out best for their playstyle. that is at least what i would like to be seeing as a minimum change with these crew perks the overall balance there is Arguably some issue with that, but I'm not going to speak too much on that because obviously this is still common test But those are the major ones I would love to see for all players because it affects everyone regardless of your skill level And I, that's what I really would like to see Japanese tank destroyers obviously fantastic I would, I'm really really keen for them. Are they going to be the most um, Overpowered vehicles in the game probably not they'll, they'll be all right. They'll be decent I've had a bit of fun with the tier 8 premium but I don't think they're going to be ridiculously overpowered or anything like that. I think they're just going to be fun to play, especially if been after them for quite a while, like myself. Now, the final one that I want to talk about today is what plus. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, what plus. So what do you get with this new subscription type model? You get a gold reserve, which give you 500 gold per week, an extra excluded map. So instead of having, say, two map bands with a uh, premium account time, you'll get three get free equipment demounting for all types of equipment except experimental equipment at levels two and three and you get intensive crew regiments so they can just start earning experience even if you're not playing the game and you get a exclusive rental vehicle the unique ps54 which is able to take any american crew members no matter what vehicle that they come from as long as their major qualifications match so the gold reserve i'm not too fussed about that that's fine that's whatever the intensive crew regiment that's there yeah, it, it's all right it's it's a nice little thing to have i just don't really see um why that isn't something that was needed to be in the game because you want to be playing your games to ex uh, experience in your crews but that's just a little thing i'm not too sold on the exclusive rental vehicle as long as it's just a rental um before it's added i'm fine with that however i don't see why they're going ahead into this to accommodate any american crew members it's a uh, maybe they're just testing something out here but having an exclusive rental vehicle for while you have this account time that seems all right in my mind extra excluded map however i don't think that should be something that's gated behind another paywall honestly i think that's something that should be available for all players so you have in my mind it should be a minimum of two maps that can be excluded plus the third one with roller tanks premium account time that would be what i think to be ideal um because there's what plus i can see what they're going for to make it lucrative but i don't think it should have an extra excluded map in this one and the biggest one in my mind that i'm have a bit of a gripe with is the free equipment demounting now i don't have a problem if it's just for the standard equipment that you can demount so your regular old vents gun ammo, whatever it may be that's fine the issue i have is when it's for bond equipment because well that's just a very very insane advantage you're giving to your more experienced players because all of a sudden you go from having to spend 200 bonds every single time you demount an equipment and you don't earn those very very quickly 200 bonds each time you demount to completely for free but all of a sudden you've gone ahead and made bounty equipment which was meant to be very very similar to bond equipment uh just much worse but being able to demount it with demount kits and with gold and you've just made that irrelevant uh <laughs> which is not great for 
gets the majority of the player base. I was watching a video by o O6 Walst. I'll link his channel in the description. And he was talking about this. And one of the points that stuck out to me regarding this is the fact that, well, you want to be finding players on an even playing field, right? And that's one of the most exciting things that he looks forward to in the game. And for me, I don't really see why we need to be giving people the luxury of having bond equipment on all of your tanks for free, essentially, because you can just demount it for free now and put on to another tank, completely no cost. When really the most powerful equipment in the game should have some sort of cost associated with it when you're demounting and putting something else. Instead of just saying, here's 10 USD, take my money and get, let me have a bit of an extra advantage on playing whatever vehicle I want. That's my biggest gripe with this. I don't know what else they could do to make to a swim deal instead of this extra excluded map and the equipment demounting, but I don't think that's something that should be gated behind a paywall. Any House. thank you everyone uh for listening to me and my rambling in this video if you did enjoy please consider subscribing liking and let me know your thoughts in the comments as well thank you guys enjoy the rest of your weekend and i will catch you guys in the next one i think so